All right, now let's look at a couple different um, scenarios of things that we may want to set up for, let's say, backgrounds or whatever. Uh, I'm going to delete this. <clears throat> so I'm going to drop in a just a plane. frames and just do current frames yes oh and let me take my render settings back down to standard so we can do that all right so this is just a default plane that is dropped in and you can see whenever we do this um, the default plane is really boring looking it's just like a plane um, so it's not anything like fancy to look at <clears throat> um, so if you ever use just a regular plane uh, inside your scene, typically you want to make sure this is big enough that it encompasses a lot of your area. Um, that way it doesn't look like it's a CG world. It just looks like you have, you know, more stuff going on inside of it. Even though it is CG, we just don't want to appear to kind of give that illusion. Here, this looks much better than that. Okay, so always make sure your environments are big enough. Now, Cinema has a cool uh, feature inside this where it actually allows us, if I click on this, it just adds a floor, and this floor is actually an infinite floor, so it goes on forever. So instead of me having to scale a plane up, it automatically makes it huge. Nice. Okay, so typically I'll use this floor uh, for any scenes where I need a floor, just because it's super simple. Um, some other setups you may want to do, let me drop the floor into here. And I'm just going to drop this floor onto that floor. Okay, so that goes away. Some other setups you may have is, let's say that you wanted um, uh, a rounded backdrop. Okay. So this is another kind of setup that you might have for a scene where you want these, um, instead of it being perfectly flat, you know, nothing in the background, you may want something like this. Um, and the way this gets created, I'm going to make a small version of it. As I started off with a cube, and I deleted the faces, so I hit C and deleted the faces. Then I grabbed the edges here. And then I just added a bevel. Now, if I needed my objects to fit this bigger, obviously I would just scale this whole thing up, just make the whole thing bigger. If I needed the um, edges to go further, I could just double click this edge and pull it, or double click this edge and pull it, or double click that edge and pull it. Um, the idea with any kind of backdrop is the look you're going for is going to be dictated, or is going to be um, created by cre using the right backdrop. Okay, so something like that is like a perfect instance where you may want to use uh, that kind of setup. Um, it's definitely better than having a, um, uh, a cube, just a, fl a flat plane cube in the background. Again, depending on what you're trying to show off, um, having a cube in the background is, uh, it's pretty boring looking. You get this harsh line in the middle of it. You know, something like this. <clears throat> Obviously it looks very CG going to cut off because of you know, messing with the camera. Move that plane over. There we go. Okay, we don't want our shadows uh, hitting the backside. That's a bad thing. We don't want our objects floating. That's a bad thing. Um, so you have to be aware of this kind of stuff. These lines that are here, people will notice. Okay, and if they're not there for a reason, then they shouldn't be there. We need to, to fix it. Okay, so that's why I use those rounded ones. They're really nice. Um, another setup that I'll do is I'm going to bring in that floor again there. Um, I'll also add a backdrop. Okay, and a backdrop, um, what is that? Rounded backdrop. I didn't want that one though. There we go. Um, so I added this background, which is basically under here, I added background. Um, Now you can't see it until I render. So 
but now I have this solid color. Whatever uh, material that I have here, I drop onto that background and it assigns that color. Here's one without the color on there and it'll just be like a flat gray color. Okay, now again, that looks pretty ugly like that, but uh, we'll get fancier, okay? So I'm gonna drop this material onto the background. I'm also gonna drop it onto floor. And I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna choose what this looks like. Instead of it being a flat color like this, where it's just like that, uh, I'm gonna go to my texture and I'm gonna add a uh, gradient. And on this gradient, I'm gonna choose a radial gradient, or sorry, a circular gradient. And the very center of this, I'm gonna just pick a color like that. And then that other color will be basically that same color but darker. So it's kind of like a vignette. I'm gonna close it. And I'm gonna choose on this, on each one of these, how those materials get placed. So I want these basically to be um, frontal, like that, frontal, yes. All right, so now when I render this, what should happen is I should get this gradient that happens. The camera is projecting those textures through frontal straight ahead. Okay, now that looks weird because of how this is laid out and how that's laid out. But just give me one more second and I'll fix that. Under the floor, I'm gonna go to my tags and I'm gonna add a compositing tag. And I'm gonna say, don't cast shadows because I don't want the floor to cast shadows. Uh, and then I'm gonna use it as a compositing background and I'm going to do the same thing for the background here, add a uh, compositing tag. Don't cast shadows, compositing background. And then let's just see what that looks like. I may need to adjust still. I may have clicked something or forgot to click something, but we'll see. Ideally, I'm trying to get rid of that edge. <clears throat> it should be like a nice, smooth transition from one to the other. Yes, I did do something wrong. Uh, floor, I see shadows, yes, see my camera. Let's turn reflection off. I think that's what I have on there. It shouldn't be on there. Yep, there we go. So now with the reflection off, you can see it looks like one uh, seamless background. Background, okay. And that's nice because we get the shadows, but we don't get all the uh, other crap that would go along with it. Uh, and it really helps our object kind of stand out and be more uh, in the foreground, okay. Um, so those background plates are awesome. Whatever it's, you know, we put back there, we put a picture or a whatever, and it'll, you know, render that out. <coughs> um, very easily we can adjust the coloring. Instead of it being purple, obviously we could just slide the hue over to blue. Grab that one. Slide the hue over to that blue. And then basically just create a different look for our entire scene. Okay. Now I'm using this in conjunction with, um, oops, not camera, where are my lights? Uh, with my sky that's in the background. Um, so if I were to turn my sky off, no, I don't have any materials on there that are reflecting it, but it, we, would ha we would definitely see a difference if I did have my materials on there. Uh, and then I'm using those area lights as well. Okay, so if you have those area lights on there, we would definitely again see a difference. And then if we also added in um, physical and we added this to global illumination, you know, then we would really start to see more of this stuff looking more realistic, more natural, more uh, of how we want it to look. Uh, another kind of neat effect you can do on your items, instead of giving them materials like this, uh, sometimes it's neat just to give them flat coloring. So if I go into, let's say, the color of uh, this and I just turn that off and I just go to my luminance and I just give this a color let's say blue like that and I'm going to assign this blue to all of my objects just by dragging this on top of that okay we'll render it sure we're in physical with global illumination so we're getting you know it's taking a minute to load all of our objects are very flat you know we don't see anything really happening here Okay, we see the shadows on the bottom, but the objects are just gone. They all have no shading to them at all, okay? So now I'm gonna go to my render settings, and under effect, I'm gonna add ambient occlusion. <clears throat> and what this is gonna do is it's gonna create the shading on top of it. Um, it's a neat effect.
So you can already see how this is forming out where we're able to get these flat, flat colors with some, some shadows at the bottom and this kind of like division between all the objects. It's not for your everyday scenes, but it is kind of like a neat look um, that we can add. Uh, we can also use maybe not all of this um, luminance, right? So I take the luminance down some, and let's say I added some color in here of, you know, that same color, maybe again, darker or something. Uh, we can play with that to get a, a different look. So anytime we're doing materials, we have to really consider the entire scene, the entire picture of everything in the scene to get it to look the way we want it to look. Um, we can create some very cool looking renders based off of just some cool materials that we've created, some cool things we've set up. Um, but it's a matter of going through and, and seeing all these little tips and tricks and tweaks that we can do to stuff. Like that looks pretty neat compared to, you know, that's cool too, but that's a different kind of, of way to look at it, right? And again, this is taking longer to do. Uh, another couple, a little effect, just so you can see it, is um, where are you? Oh, I think it's under standard. Yep, there's one called Sketch and Tune as well, which again, a nice little neat thing that you know maybe you'd want to do um, for a project, not for this class specifically, but just a project in general. Let me turn off globe illumination just so it goes quicker. <clears throat> and you'll see this is actually a taking our 3D objects and making them look cartoony. Okay, and it's again, it's just another iteration of, let's delete that one, of different things that we can do to our objects to make them look <clears throat> stylized, look the way we want them to look. It's not about I'm making it blue or red or green or yellow, it's about creating that look in the scene. Um, on that sketch and tune, a whole bunch of things. Where do you want your lines? Where do you want your shading? Where do you want your, uh, how do you want to render out? Okay, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. So um, use that as just a, a extra stuff. Um, some of the things we'll use later in assignments, but for now, you know, just use it as extra stuff. 